Yo, what is going on Fantasy Addicts? I'm your host, That Fantasy Addict, and today we have another mock draft. We are doing a 12-team PPR mock draft from the 5th overall selection on sleeper.app, which I will leave a link to in the description below if you'd like to check them out. So let's not waste any time here. Let's get right into the mock draft. So we actually have a little strange first few picks here. Saquon goes number one overall, then Kamara, Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook. Saquon going ahead of Christian McCaffrey is understandable, but Kamara ahead of CMC, that should never be happening. So sure, this is uh, definitely a little unusual start to a draft, but honestly, things like this might happen in your draft. You never know. So let's just focus on our pick here. We're not going to worry about the other picks. And for me, it's between Derrick Henry and Zeke. You could go either way here. These are probably, two, yeah, they're definitely two of the favorites to lead the league in rushing yards. I believe Derrick Henry is actually the favorite at this moment, and Zeke is third, I think, behind Saquon Barkley. I'm going to go with Zeke just because in a PPR league, we can feel more confident about Zeke's role in the in the receiving game than Derrick Henry, just because Derrick Henry has never really been used that much in the receiving game, but Zeke has been. We can feel pretty sure that he'll get around 50 receptions, if not more, in a Mike McCarthy-led offense that may not use Zeke in a standard running back role, but at the very least will be throwing a decent amount of passes to him just because Mike McCarthy does like to pass the ball. So we're going to take Zeke with this pick here. I think that's a completely fine pick. I'm not going to consider taking a receiver this early. Then Michael Thomas goes, followed by Derrick Henry, Kenyon Drake, Josh Jacobs, Hopkins, Devontae Adams, Austin Eckler, Nick Chubb, Joe Mixon, Miles Sanders, CEH, Patrick Mahomes goes off the board quite early, Aaron Jones, and Chris Godwin. I don't like that team with Michael Thomas and Godwin, even though they are two top wide receivers. They're going to find themselves in a pretty big pickle come the third round when they are looking desperately for a decent running back. So it's our pick now. And of course, at tight end, Travis Kelsey's there, who is always a pretty safe pick in the second round because you know that he's going to be one of the best tight ends. At wide receiver, we have Julio Jones and Tyreek Hill. I like Tyreek Hill more because Julio Jones was nearly outscored by Calvin Ridley last season. So I think that you might as well just wait for Calvin Ridley if you want to take Julio Jones there. And at running back, there's not much value at all. I can definitely wait for Le'Veon Bell and Chris Carson in the third round, and I'm not going to take Gurley or Fournette. So for me, it's a receiver at this point or Travis Kelsey, but I think it's a little early for Travis Kelsey, and I think that Tyreek Hill did fall a little bit. He normally goes earlier, and I'm not going to take Julio Jones. Obviously not going to go with Galladay or Mike Evans. I think everyone can agree on that. And Julio Jones was being outscored by Calvin Ridley last season, so I don't see why you would take him over Tyreek Hill with this pick. So we're going to go with Tyreek Hill. Now Lamar Jackson goes, followed by Todd Gurley, Travis Kelsey, David Johnson, Julio Jones, Mike Evans, Kenny Galladay, and Kill goes right before my pick little snag right there. I would have been pretty happy with Kittle. I'm not sure if I would have taken him though, just because the running back depth is getting a little lower. So obviously at wide receiver, sure, Juju and Edelman are, excuse me, Juju and Thielen are good picks, but to be honest, we, we just need a running back right now. Sure, we have Zeke, but you can never have too much depth at the running back position. So for me, it is between Le'Veon Bell and Chris Carson. You can go either way here. I am leaning Carson just because the only concern there really is injuries, but he usually only misses one or two games in a season, and Le'Veon Bell has some more concerns about the team overall. We know how good the Seahawks are going to be. We know that Chris Carson is going to be a good running back as long as he's on the field and as long as he doesn't fumble his career away, literally, because he does have a fumbling issue, but as long as he stays on the field and as long as he's on the field, because obviously fumbles could take him off the field, but if he's healthy and not fumbling, basically if he is on the field, I am very happy with Chris Carson in my lineup. So let's go with him. After we take him, we see OBJ go off the board quite early, followed by Fournette, Juju, Melvin Gordon, Allen Robinson, Le'Veon Bell, James Conner, Thielen Falls quite a bit, DJ Moore, Amari Cooper, Mark Andrews, Ridley, Cooper Cup, and Robert Woods. So we see the fifth, or excuse me, the sixth overall team have Michael Thomas, Chris Godwin, OBJ, and Robert Woods. That is just an awful start. Also, a team with Patrick Mahomes, Juju, and Calvin Ridley, and a team with Hopkins, Allen Robinson, and Amari Cooper. 
they are all going to find themselves in a very, very big pickle when they are trying to find another running back because their depth at the running back position is looking very, very slim right now. At tight end, Mark Andrews already went, so no reason to take a tight end right now. At wide receiver, DK Metcalf, AJ Brown are both there, as well as Keenan Allen. But I do like the guys in the next range, DJ Chark, Terry McLaurin. I like those guys more, and I can wait on them until the fifth round, so I'm not sure that I would want to take a wide receiver right here. At running back, I think that Jonathan Taylor is okay, but this is a little too early for him. David Montgomery, Kareem Hunt, Cam Akers are all good picks, but I think that one of those guys, including Darius Geis, should be there by the sixth pick, or by our sixth round pick. So I'm thinking that it might be worth it to take a wide receiver here and with our fifth round pick, and then get one of those running backs with our sixth round pick. So we are deciding between AJ Brown and DK Metcalf. I think that AJ Brown is probably, obviously, the more risky play, but we already have a fairly risky player on a week to week basis in Tyreek Hill. So I think that we're going to play it safe and go with DK Metcalf. Except we do have Chris Carson, who is on the same team, so that is risky in itself. So now that I see it, they both kind of have some risk. So I think I'm going to go with A.J. Brown because he is higher in my rankings. So let's go with A.J. Brown with this pick. Then Devin Singletary goes, followed by Mark Ingram, Jonathan Taylor, David Montgomery, Raheem Mostert, T.Y. Hilton, D.K. Metcalf, and Kareem Hunt. So... I just want to take a quick look at running back again. Now I'm seeing the value go quite a bit. We saw a lot of running backs go recently. We just saw two, three, four, five, six running backs go. So now I may be forced to take Darius Geis or Cam Akers. Looking at the wide receivers, Terry McLaurin's there. But, you know, guys like Michael Gallup and even Debo Samuel, he's fallen quite a bit now. So guys in that range, Michael Gallup, Debo Samuel, Tyler Boyd and Marvin Jones, they will be available with our sixth round pick. Even our seventh and eighth round pick, they'll be there. So I think that even though I planned on taking the wide receiver here and waiting until the sixth round for a running back, none of the running backs who I like will be there in the sixth round, like Cam Akers and Darius Geis. I do like Dobbins and Ronald Jones as well, who may be there in the sixth round, but I don't want to take any chances. So it's between Geis and Akers for me. I think that Akers obviously is probably the safer play even though we know that Geis is talented and we don't really know if Akers will be a talented back in the NFL he has such an easier chance to being a featured back I feel like and he doesn't have the injury concerns that Geis has so I'm gonna go with Akers but if you want to go with Geis there I think that is completely fine then we see Keenan Allen go off the board followed by DJ Chark, Darren Waller, Cortland Sutton, Zach Ertz, Kyler Murray, Tyler Lockett, Terry McLaurin, who I really, really wanted, Marquise Brown, DeAndre Swift, Dak Prescott, Stephon Diggs, Gronk, and Devontae Parker. Can we all just take a moment to admire the sixth overall team who has only taken wide receivers? That is ballsy right there. That will not pay off, I can promise you that. So, looking at wide receiver, Gallup, Debo Samuel, Tyler Boyd, all available, and one of them should be available with our next pick but who shouldn't be available with our next pick is Darius Geis and J.K. Dobbins. I like both of them. I think that Dobbins is a safer play just because we know that he should be on the field. Geis, we don't really know if he's going to be on the field, but J.K. Dobbins' only path to being an RB2 is pretty much if Mark Ingram goes down. Darius Geis' path to being an RB2 or an RB1 is just staying on the field, and that is more likely than... Mark Ingram going down. So for that reason, I think that Geis is the better option here. He is a little riskier, but he has a much higher chance of becoming an RB1 or an RB2 this season. He just has to stay on the field, which is a little bit of a tall order for him, but asking for Mark Ingram to go down in order for J.K. Dobbins to do well is an even taller order than asking Darius Geis to stay healthy. So we're going to take Darius Geis. Then A.J. Green goes, speaking of injuries, A.J. Green, obviously he is very, very, very injury prone. Do not like him this season. Russell Wilson, Damian Williams, Jarvis Landry, Breezy, Deshaun Watson, Evan Ingram, and Brandon Cooks. So J.K. Dobbins is still there, and I could take him, which I am thinking about it. Let's take a look at our roster. So we have Zeke, Chris Carson, Tyreek Hill, A.J. Brown, 
Cam Akers, Darius Geis. I would have five running backs and only two wide receivers if I were to take J.K. Dobbins here. At wide receiver, I would be taking a very, very big risk if I were waiting, if I were hoping that Tyler Boyd was there. And even though I am okay with Marvin Jones, I'd rather take Gallup here and then get Marvin Jones with our next pick because we already have four running backs who I do like a lot and they all have a good amount of potential. So we are going to go with Michael Gallup here. He doesn't need a ton of targets to do well. He was a wide receiver too last season and only had about 115 targets. So anyone who's saying that CeeDee Lamb's presence is going to make Michael Gallup a bad pick, they're just lying straight up to you because Michael Gallup only had 115 targets last season and was a wide receiver too. Not to mention, there are so many vacated targets in this offense. CeeDee Lamb is not going to take the 180 targets that are vacated in this offense. So Michael Gallup should see more targets, and he was already really, really good last year. And now he's a third-year wide receiver, so he should be improved this season. Then J.K. Dobbins goes, followed by Tom Brady, Ronald Jones, Tyler Boyd, Matt Ryan, Keyshawn Vaughn, Jordan Howard, Deontay Johnson, Alexander Madison, Debo Samuel, Sonny Michelle, Will Fuller, Tevin Coleman, and Tyler Higbee. So I noticed, finally, the sixth overall pick team took a running back. J.K. Dobbins is their RB1, pretty risky, and then doesn't even take his second running back with his eighth round pick because he decided to take Tyler Higbee. Not a good pick there. I like Tyler Higbee, but he could have gotten James White, who I think is a very safe player. Should have taken James White, not Tyler Higbee. He needs a second running back, not a second tight end. So let's take a quick look at tight end here. Hayden Hurst is the only guy even worth taking here, but I don't want to take him this early. Looking at running back, James White is the only running back, and Matt Breda. Those two are the guys who I would really be considering here. Then at wide receiver, Marvin Jones is definitely the best pick here. Even though there is a much better chance that Marvin Jones falls to me with my next pick than James White or Matt Breda, I want Marvin Jones so badly. I have more solid running backs than wide receivers, and Marvin Jones is almost a lock in my book to be a wide receiver too. He was so good last season before Matt Stafford went down. He was a solid wide receiver too in points per game through week eight, which was right, which was right before Stafford got hurt. So Marvin Jones is very safe. Don't be fooled. He is so good when Kenny Galladay is on the field. Don't think that just because he is behind Kenny Galladay means that he can't score. Trust me, he can score. Look at the splits when he is playing with Kenny Galladay. He goes absolutely off in those weeks. Then James White goes, followed by Matt Breida, the guy who I really, really like. Two running backs in a row who I am very big fans of. Edelman, Hayden Hurst, Darius Slayton. I like all those guys right there. Great picks all around. Then Mack, Zach Moss, and Tariq Cohen. So a lot of running backs still going. Obviously, the tight end who we really liked, Hayden Hurst, is gone, so we're not going to take a tight end here. Let's take a quick look at running back. Latavius Murray is probably the only running back who I would consider worth taking here. So we could take him, and at wide receiver, CeeDee Lamb is also the only guy available who I would consider taking. At quarterback, plenty of guys there. We don't need to take one yet. But looking at wide receiver, there are still guys later on in the draft like Jalen Rieger, like Jamison Crowder, who I am okay with. At running back, Latavius Murray is just about the only one left who I'm okay with. And I think that he is probably worth it ahead of a guy like CeeDee Lamb because I'm okay with later wide receivers. I'm not okay with any of these late round running backs. Latavius Murray is the last one who I'm okay with, so we're going to take Murray. Then Rodgers goes, followed by Hunter Henry, Josh Allen, Philip Lindsay, CeeDee Lamb, Jerry Judy, Carson Wentz, Emmanuel Sanders, Carryon Johnson, McCole Hardman, Matt Stafford, San Francisco defense going early in the 10th round, not a good pick there, Henderson and Tony Pollard. So it is once again our pick. We are not going to take a tight end, not going to take a quarterback because there is value later on. And actually at quarterback, maybe it is worth taking now because Daniel Jones and Big Ben are the last two guys who I want. Let's see, how many of these teams have backup quarterbacks? So none of these teams have backup quarterbacks. They might take a backup quarterback. So unless there is a ton of value somewhere else, I might take one of these guys as my quarterback. And there's no value at running back or wide receiver. So we're gonna take our quarterback. 
because Daniel Jones and Big Ben are the last two guys who I would be okay with starting. You can take either guy, but as long as Big Ben doesn't get re-injured, we have seen him produce year in and year out in fantasy football. He is a great quarterback on a very, very, very pass-friendly team, and he has chemistry with Juju. He has chemistry with a lot of these guys, and Deontay Johnson is a solid wide receiver too, so I think this offense should be pretty good, so we're going to take Big Ben, but if you want to take Daniel Jones, I don't think that's a big deal. Daniel Jones is good as well. Then Buffalo defense goes, followed by Henry Ruggs, Noah Fant, Anthony Miller, Jared Cook, New England defense, Crowder, and Joe Burrow. So in retrospect, we could have waited and gotten Daniel Jones or maybe even Big Ben, but it's okay because better safe than sorry. So let's look again at tight end. Still plenty of guys who I like. I can completely wait on them. At running back, Boston Scott is okay. Gibson is okay. Duke Johnson is okay, but I like the value at wide receiver here. I think that Jalen Rieger is the play here. He realistically actually could be the wide receiver one on this team, but he should for sure be at least the wide receiver two here. This offense does like to spread the ball around. They like to run two tight end sets. They're going to get Boston Scott and Miles Sanders the ball through the air, but there still is a lot of targets to go around, and Rieger should be a decent flex option for a week or two if I need to plug him in due to injuries and or bye weeks. So we'll take Rieger with that pick. I like that right there. Pittsburgh defense goes, followed by Chase Edmonds, Christian Kirk, Antonio Gibson, Baltimore defense, Daniel Jones, Deshaun Jackson, Justin Tucker, Justin Jefferson, Austin Hooper, Chicago defense, Sterling Shepard, Drew Locke, and Boston Scott. So we have one more bench spot and we have one, two, three, four, five wide receivers and one, two, three, four, five running backs. I feel more confident in my wide receivers than my running backs. I don't see a ton of value at wide receiver down here. I would like another running back, but there's not really any value here. So I might wanna take a backup tight end. So this is something that I've been doing a lot, especially in 12 team drafts, because I see so much value down here late in drafts. So we're gonna take either Jacecki or Hawkinson as our starting tight end. You can go either way here. I'm going to go Hawkinson just because I feel like he is a little more talented and on what should definitely be a much better offense. So we're going to take Hawkinson. He should take definitely a big stride forward going into this season. So then Michael Pittman goes, followed by Brandon Ayuk, Preston Williams, Duke Johnson, Naheem Hines, Anthony McFarlane, John Brown, and Brashad Perriman. So now we're just going to take our backup tight end here and Jacecki and Goddard are both good options. Goddard's a little safer. Jacecki's a little riskier, but I think that I've been taking a lot of Dallas Goddard pretty much almost in every draft. So we're going to change things up, take Jacecki. But honestly, any of these guys, Jacecki, Jonu Smith, Eric Ebron, Dallas Goddard, Blake Jarwin, any of those guys, if you wanted to take any of them, I couldn't really blame you. I would take either Goddard or Jacecki. But if you wanted to take Ebron or you wanted to take Jarwin, I couldn't really fault you for that. But I'm going to take Jacecki because I like Jacecki and Goddard the most out of these guys. And I've been taking Goddard a lot recently, so we'll switch it up. Take Jacecki here. Baker Mayfield goes, followed by Minnesota defense. Harrison Butker, Eric Ebron, Jared Goff, Sammy Watkins, Tampa Bay defense, Justin Tucker, Carlos Hyde, Greg Zerline, Will Lutz, John o. Smith, Young Hoku, and Robbie Gould. So now we are taking our defense and kicker. Please wait until the last two rounds or at least the last three rounds you could do. You could take a defense in the third to last round if you want, but just wait until the last three rounds to take your defense and kicker, please. Actually, kicker has to be last round. Defense, it can be third to last round if you really want to. But for our defense, I think that Chargers is definitely the best here. They're the best on paper. They have a decent schedule. And week one, they have a pretty easy team to play. So I like to stream defenses. I think it's definitely the play. You get good value. You don't have to spend a high draft pick and you can find defenses playing very, very, very crappy offenses. And we're going to start out with week one, having the Chargers hopefully scoring a lot of points on defense because of their easy matchup. So we'll take the Chargers defense here. Then Zane Gonzalez goes, followed by Seattle defense, Fairbath, Kansas City defense, Matt Prater, Ryan Tannehill, Jake Elliott, AP, and now it's our pick. Looking at kicker, you can really go with anyone here. I'm going to take Matt Gay because, you know, Steven Goskowski, 
always very good under Tom Brady. Matt Gay should do the same thing, hopefully. He's a solid kicker. He can kick from far out, and he's going to be on what should be a pretty good offense that is scoring a lot of points. So we'll take Matt Gay there. Then A.J. Dillon goes, followed by Mike Williams, Jalen Samuels, Golden Tate, Darrington Evans, Blake Jarwin, and Mr. Irrelevant is Jimmy Garoppolo. So let's just do a quick recap of our draft. At quarterback, we have Big Ben. He's fine. He'll get the job done. At running back, we have Zeke and Chris Carson. Really, really like that right there, especially because our wide receiver is Tyreek Hill. Our wide receiver one, that is. Our wide receiver two has a lot of potential, A.J. Brown, and our tight end is T.J. Hawkinson, who will get the job done and I think is a very, very, very good tight end. Then we have in our flex position, Cam Akers, who I think has a very easy path to being the RB1 in that offense. Matt Gay and Chargers defense, whatever, they're relevant. Kickers and defense, they don't matter. Darius Geis is another player who I could have in my flex if he pans out. And same with Michael Gallup and same with Marvin Jones. I really like the depth that I have on this team. Then Latavius Murray, Jalen Rieger are both players who are kind of just hoping that they turn out well. I don't know if they're going to be good. We're just hoping that they do well. And then Jacecki is a backup tight end for us to fill in for when TJ Hawkinson goes down or during his bye week, or if Jacecki's better than Hawkinson, then he can be our starting tight end. So what do I give this team? I would give this team a B plus. My last draft, I gave my team an A minus. I think that this team, obviously it's a 12 team mock draft. So by nature, my team's gonna be a little worse than my last team. But even that, I do think that my last team, considering it was a 12, excuse me, considering it was a 10 team draft, I do think that this team is still a little worse, even considering that it was a 12 team draft. So we're gonna give it a B plus. I think it's very good. It has a lot of potential. A lot is really riding on our tight ends and AJ Brown. If AJ Brown does well and one of our two tight ends is very, very good, this is definitely a very, very good team and a contending team. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button so you can get all of my other content that I have already put out and that I'm going to put out in the future. Also hit that like button because it helps me so much. It helps get this video out to more people. And if you enjoyed, then you can show your appreciation just by for free clicking that thumbs up button. It helps a ton. And I want you guys to let me know what you think I did wrong in this draft, if you think I did anything wrong, but I assume that you did. So let me know in the comments below, what did I do wrong? Who should I have picked at a certain pick? What did I do wrong, where and when? Let me know, because I'm interested in what you guys thought of this draft, I really am. I wanna know how you guys thought I did, what you think I did wrong, what I did right. So let me know guys. And I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Peace.